are living in a complex world. Sin complicates everything, and only the truth of Christ can return us to simplicity. Today, we look at a powerful phrase found often in Scripture and apply one thing to our lives. What is the one thing God is trying to teach you right now? Let's join Scott Pauling as we find our place in the Word of God. If you could have one thing today, what would it be? Now, some people view the Christian faith like um, some uh, slot machine religion or some genie in a bottle where they just make their request and get whatever they want. Uh, But, you know, your wants, your desires reveal so much about your heart towards God. I'm not talking about some shallow uh, thing that you want today. If you could boil all of life down and say, this is the one thing I most desire, what would that one thing be? I saved Psalm 27 uh, for our final study of one thing. It is uh, the only one of these scriptures that comes from the Old Testament. But I saved it last, not because it's least, but uh, to make an emphasis. It's found in Psalm 27, one of the Psalms of David. And it really does bring so much beautiful simplicity to the complications of life, to complex circumstances. In Psalm 27, David has had lots of people turn against him and lots of things that didn't go his way. But he says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David said, there's one thing I want. I just want to be close to God. In fact, David has been hunted. He's run for his life. He's hidden in caves. He's been in ravines and valleys. But his mind runs to the temple. Why? Because the temple was the place where people met with God. I don't know about you. I'm glad I don't have to go to some geographical location today to meet with God We are the temple of the Holy Ghost of God who lives within us, so we can enjoy Him anywhere, everywhere, and whatever our circumstance may be. Read Psalm 27 today. You'll see a variety of people, a variety of circumstances, and a variety of emotions, but David cuts through it all and says, there's one thing I desire, one thing I will seek after. And what is that? It's to be near God. He says it actually in three ways. In verse number 4, he says that, first of all, I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And then secondly, to behold the beauty of the Lord. And then thirdly, to inquire in his temple. To be near the Lord means basically three things. First of all, it means I'm going to live in his presence. He says I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Not visit, dwell. Look, the presence of God is not something you should just visit on occasion In the words of of many old Christians, you should learn to practice the presence of God all the time, to be conscious of his constant presence with you, dwell in his presence, walk in his presence, live and labor in his presence. And I love this, all the days of my life, not one day a week, not one day a year. No, no, every day is a day to live in the Lord's presence. Every day is a day to enjoy the Lord. One thing, I want to know his presence. And then, not only to enjoy his presence, uh, but to behold his perfections. He says not only to dwell in the house of the Lord, but then he says to behold the beauty of the Lord. You know, this is an ugly world, isn't it? And circumstances get ugly, and people can be ugly. And sometimes we're ugly, but the reality is Jesus is always beautiful. You know, there's so many people that from a distance look so nice and so attractive until you get close to them. And the closer you get... You hear them talk or you watch their lives and suddenly their beauty becomes very ugly. Not so with Christ. The nearer you get to the Lord Jesus, the more of his perfection you'll see. The more of his beauty and attractiveness you'll see. Oh, the loveliness of Christ. One thing I want today, get my eyes off the ugliness all around me 
and get my eyes back on the beauty of Christ, the perfection of my God. I tell you, in an imperfect world, that will help you. And then, uh, to be near Christ not only means to enjoy His presence and behold His perfections, it also means to bring Him our prayers. He says, and to inquire in His temple, to inquire, to ask. Aren't you glad that we have access to God? We don't only have access. It's not begrudging access. It's an invitation. It's an open door. Our Lord Jesus went back to heaven, into the throne room of heaven, and he left the door open behind him. And he said, now through his good name, we get to come anytime we want and inquire in his temple. You don't have to make a trip to Jerusalem, to some temple to pray. You can pray wherever you are today. You can call upon the Lord and know God is hearing and answering your prayers. A friend, he is still the God that says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Yes, you can be near God today. You can enjoy his presence. You can behold his perfections. And you can bring your prayer to him. This is the one thing that every believer must return to again and again and again. If you want to cut through the complexities of life and the complications of this world, you must come back to the simplicity of what it means to walk in God's presence. As I was pondering this verse, something really jumped out at me. Psalm 27 was written under inspiration of the Holy Spirit by a man named David, right? David, the man after God's own heart. His heart was after God, was after one thing. It was the lifetime pursuit of the Lord's presence. Well, he had a son, and his son was Solomon, and we know Solomon mostly for the tail end of his life and the sad ending But I want you to go back to the early days, to a young Solomon. And God came to him in the middle of the night and said, Solomon, you can ask one thing of me. What one thing would you like to have? And Solomon does not ask riches. He doesn't ask for his enemies. He doesn't ask for a favor with the people. He doesn't ask for any of that. Solomon's answer is this, Lord, I'm like a little child. Think of that. The king of Israel, sitting on the throne with the crown on his head and the scepter in his hand, I feel like a little boy. I don't know how to go out, and I don't know how to come in. That's pretty bad. And the Lord said, well, what do you want? And Solomon said, one thing I'd like, I'd like wisdom. I believe that David did teach Solomon some things. Solomon betrayed some of the wisdom that he was given and disobeyed like so many of us do at times. But I believe early on you get a glimpse of the fact that David not only had lived this himself, he had taught this to his son, and even Solomon understood If he didn't have anything, but he had God's wisdom, if he had God, he had everything. If he had the Lord's presence and spirit of understanding, he had everything that he needed. I wonder if God came to you today and said, what one thing would you like? Boy, your prayer list down to one thing. The one thing we ought to be asking God for is not the many things first. It is this, Lord, I just want to live in your presence today. Lord, I want to behold your perfections today, and Lord, I want to bring my prayer to you today. I want to be near God. Over these last few studies, I don't know what the one thing is that the Holy Spirit has put his finger on in your life, what the one thing is that God is really dealing with you about, but I know this, the one thing we all need is to be near God because whatever your need, whatever even your perceived need or felt need is, I want you to know all of that is surface But when you get beneath that, the real need, the heart need, the core need is we need God. Our families need God. Our churches need God. Our nation needs God. Our world needs God. I wonder if you'd say with David today, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing. All of us at Enjoying the Journey are grateful for the opportunity to share these few moments with you. It is our sincere prayer that God will use His Word in your life throughout the day and that the simple truth will help you to know the next step He has for you. We look forward to our next study together. Until then, visit our online home at enjoyingthejourney.org. We would love to hear from you.